Welcome to the follow-up video of the ENV200 battery failure saga. So, very, very interesting because usually the viewership for the Rural Leaf or Rural Zoe or Rural ENV200 channel over the last 10 years, you sort of get a couple of thousand views per video. So pretty low numbers, viewing numbers. This one took off in the first two two days to the first 10 days, it just went boom. So there was about 23,000 views on the video at the time recording this. Um, so I thought I'd do an update on this because this whole channel has been a video diary of electric vehicle ownership for the last 10 years. That's what I've done. And there's been some interesting, should we say insights, 800 and something comments in total uh, a mass majority of those are pointing the finger at EVs being no good, they were never going to work, um, and they're a bit of a failure, with almost the majority of those being sort of ridiculing to a degree their green credentials. So we bought a vehicle that the batteries failed at 86,000 miles, and the fingers pointed saying, well, you're not hardly saving the planet, are you? And that's one of the main comments that sort of shines through. Which is interesting because it does give an insight. And I think that is partly to do with mainstream media or the paper or whatever you want to call it. Must be pushing the idea that buying an electric car is saving the planet. This is news to me. This is not something in the last 10 years. I don't think I've ever sat in front of the camera in all the hundreds of videos that I've done and ever said I've bought my electric vehicle to save the planet. That's been nothing to do with it. Uh, some people may buy them because that's what they think they're doing, but not in my case. It, I've never suggested that. The entire purchase of the electric vehicle for me was a cost-saving exercise. And back in the first videos, you'll see my petrol fuel bill was around about on average over a 12 month period about 300 pounds i think it was that um, we calculated looking back through all the bank statements and the the idea that we buy in this and leaf back all that time ago was because i could pay the leasing cost for the leaf was 60 pound a month less than my fuel bill and it was like wow i can have a new car less than my fuel bill and the electricity cost is hardly anything that that was it. And then I got it, had a bit of a nightmare for a couple of weeks, getting used to driving it. And it j just absolutely loved it. It's the best vehicle I've ever owned. Um, and I still hold that view in terms of driving. There's no gear changes. It's just very pleasant to drive. Very nippy off the line. They, that's just the nature of electric vehicles. Um, so to cover that off, we didn't buy it to save the planet that's not the intention at all so i think that's really the fault of mainstream media maybe pushing that narrative that you know we've all got to go ev to to be green possibly i don't know but anyway that is not the reason i have it so pointing the finger and laughing because look at me with my now failed env 200 um and what a failure that green enterprise was that's it's missing the mark shall we say so that's never the intention. The, missing the mark financially is a possibility, but it's, I'll, I'll, I'll lead up to this in a minute, but this, not really. We have come to find a solution to the issue. To cover off the second lot, now there's, there's a myriad of, of responses to this and they're not all in the same bucket as it were, but there's some views that stand out quite stark. There's the one I just talked about pointing at the fact that it's not green um, and ha ha, which is it's not very nice. Um, you know, this is just a video diary for people that are thinking about getting electric vehicles. So there's that side of it. The other side is those that absolutely love electric vehicles, not really liking the fact that it's been brought to light that my specific one has failed, the battery's failed. Uh, that is exactly what has happened uh, with the vehicle. Now, again, that's also slightly odd and, and slightly concerning because all this is, this 10 years worth of filming the journey, is a video diary. It is 
nothing else. It's just a video diary. This is what's happening on the day. If you go back to the early videos, it's like videos almost every day on ownership and it's spread out a longer video, you know, a longer gap between the videos as I got into using it. And it just became a, a diary over time to document how we're getting on with EVs. So that's the second group, which is basically bury head in sand, don't want to know. And what you end up with, actually, if you try and draw it down to sim simple terms, you have a whole host of people that don't want EVs to work at all, who also don't want to be wrong. So bringing videos out saying how brilliant EVs are, that group don't like that because even if they actually are brilliant, you don't want to admit that <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> Um, and exactly the same with those absolutely love EVs and have invested a lot of money and time into them. Don't want to necessarily admit that, oh, that might be a bad decision, bad choice, bad what, anything, whatever. Being wrong is not easy. My story, however, so to add context to it, is interesting because in total we've had eight electric vehicles. In my immediate family, we have... The EMV 200 that's faulty, the EMV 200, which is mine, not my wife's, which is not faulty, still very good. And it's older than my wife's um, and a Renault Zoe, which is working absolutely fine. No issues whatsoever. Uh, my parents, Nissan Leaf, which is now, I think, approximately eight years old and has done 125,000, 130,000 miles. That is all right and working fine. No issues there. We had then three Nissan Leafs on uh, lease, business lease. We had three of them. Owned them all three for four years with a range of mileage. I think one of us did 20 odd thousand miles approximately. I did, I think, 55,000 miles, something like that. Um, and the other one we had did 84,000 miles, I believe. No issues in each, any of those, should I say. Um, and when we plugged in Leaf Spy, the dongle into diagnostics, they'd lost hardly any battery. So that the leasing was because we were told that the batteries would fail. This is back in 2014, so 10 years ago. The batteries would fail within two years, approximately, and they'll be no good. So if you lease for four years, what's the problem? They're going to, the leasing company is going to help you out and refit a battery, or when they catch fire and burn your house down and kill everybody. Um, at least the leasing company will buy that. Of course, none of that actually happened. And it was the experience of owning these Nissan Leafs. All three, no issues whatsoever. That led to the confidence to buy the Renault Zoe. And so we bought the Renault Zoe, but also bought an EMV 200, the one that's failed. We bought that new. Um, and that led to me buying my EMV 200, my parents buying their Nissan Leaf, etc. So what we have is a whole load of 10 years of experience of EV ownership. All of them have worked absolutely fine. One of them has had a premature issue at 86,000 miles. I think the mileage is more or less irrelevant in this case. This battery pack from some period of time uh, has taken a, a downturn. And, and most likely what it's been is a few of the cell packs, they come in little packs in these batteries, um, and it's in the entire unit, which fits under the car quite nicely. It's bolted in, very simplistic design, not a lot to go wrong. Um, some of the packs in there started to fail early on. Now you expect that, you get degradation over time, but you'll get that in any motor vehicle or any any anything um, as it starts to decay, essentially, over a period of time, whether it's diesel, petrol, whatever. It's not as efficient as when it's brand new. As soon as you start using it, obviously, it's deteriorating. These things don't fix themselves as they go along. They're all deteriorating. Whatever vehicle you buy is deteriorating. Um, but this one appears to have had a fault. So we were expecting degradation over time. And we're thinking, oh, OK, 86,000 miles, lost a couple of bars off the battery. Yeah, I'd probably expect that. It's gone down from what it was the... 75 80 miles when it's brand new don't forget this is early technology so at the time the env 200 was the pretty much there are some outliers but the mass produced electric van um, and of course ours is a, a, a people carrier essentially of a, the the nv 200 van electric um so 
early technology. Um, we saw the degradation come down. We thought, OK, that's fine. But probably what it looks like was happening is actually um, there was a fault with a couple of the packs or a couple of the cells, if as it were, that was actually slowly throttling and killing the other cells within that pack. So that's why we suddenly saw one day, somehow I've got to mute this. Oh, I will ignore it. Can't mute it at the same time. Um, yeah, basically, um, what looked like degradation wasn't. It was, a, it was a fault with the pack. Now, technology's come along a bit further since then, so that's less of an issue. But that is unique to the pack in this exact DNV200. I say my ENV200 is older than my wife's, and um, yeah, it's fine, it's still doing really good mileage. Um, so, not an issue there. So, it's not like it's a problem with all ENV200 vans. DPD, for example, occur in the UK. They have thousands of these vans on the road all over the place. So that it's not like some weird problem with all the MV 200s It's just this one. Uh, something's just not quite right. Did it catch fire? No. Um, the cells just failed and it just reduced the... Um, it just reduced the um, mileage it could do. So we have two sides to this whole thing. Um, yeah, basically two sides. One that were kind of laughing because... ENVs are terrible, ENV terrible, terrible, EVs are terrible and will never work. Uh, they catch fire, they're not green and they are written off after a few years, it's pointless. Um, you've got that side of it, you've got the other side uh, of the scale which is uh, EVs are brilliant, I can't believe you're talking badly about them. There's those two different things. It's just a video diary, just documenting exactly what happened, not putting a video up there to discredit EVs. The context of the whole thing is <laughs> owned Loads of EVs, no issues whatsoever. So, um, yeah, no issues at all, bar this one. So that has been resolved. This The ENV200 now is fixed, you'll be glad to know, or not glad to know if you hate EVs, uh, for a very reasonable price, all things considering. That video will be coming out a bit later on, just a short video of exactly the route went down. Um, just trying to cover off where exactly where we're at at the moment with this ENV200. And someone keeps trying to ring me over and over again and will not stop ringing me. You don't get the hint. Um, so that kind of really just covers that up. There's there's no fires from any EMV 200s we've ever owned. We didn't buy them for green credentials. Um, there's been some suggestion. It was just going, you know, some of the comments, I'll just go and buy a diesel. I've had a diesel for 200,000 miles and I spent three pounds on it. Um, there's been some of those comments. Now, we did actually, on this route to thinking, shall we or not fix the ENV200, seriously took that on board, go and buy a diesel. So we did. I looked up the price of an NV200, and they're really expensive, the diesel versions, as in, I might as well fix the one we've got, is the conclusion I came to. I looked on Auto Trader, looked on Auto Trader, and um, yeah, it, they are like, 12 to 15,000 pounds for a seven seater diesel. They're sort of that mark. They're 10 grand thereabouts and more for something that's, I think it was four or five years old. Can't really quote me on that, but there wasn't a lot in the offering. If they sat it at five or six K, might have gone that route. Um, but that's kind of where we were. Um, the rest of the EMV 200, bar the battery, is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a perfectly good car. Hence the pain of it failing and thinking, oh my goodness, it's almost scrap. There's got to be some way out of this. Now, to answer the other question, uh, because it probably won't be covered in the next video, but it, it wasn't as simple as replacing, um, you know, one or two packs and it cost you 200 quid, which has been some suggestion. It's okay. If you can split the pack, you can drop the battery. It's a complex task in itself in terms of very easy to remove it, but very heavy and you need some equipment. Um, and a workshop to do it in, um, drop drop the pack and then open this 400 volt pack up and then inspect some of the cells and test them and then just replace those cells, you know, 150 quid each for each of those packs. That in a lot of cases, people have done that, you know, there's loads of forums full of people who have dropped the packs out, etc. But it's not quite as simple as it sounds and uh, maybe not as safe as it sounds, depending on how you actually get on with that and what equipment you've got and what special specialities you've got in that field. So there was that suggestion, but the battery pack was too far gone. Um, it was beyond economical repair, essentially. Um, I did have a chat with Cleveley, um, which are in Cheltenham, 
uh, which are very local to us actually. <laughs> Essentially, not worth it, need to swap it out. Um, so I will cover that off in another video. But this video is just a short video, just to address some of the comments. There's no point in commenting, 800 odd comments, I'm not going to reply to all the comments, obviously. Uh, just getting a diesel car of some other description, really, the reason we've got an EMA 200 is because we need a seven seater with lots of scope for m putting stuff in and out. So a seven seater like a VW Turan, we used to have. That's a very small seven seater with a Siberian Husky, an Alaskan Malamu, and a family of six along with luggage, you need something bigger than that. Now the NV200 fits that bill and we wanted electric, so an ENV200. So it would need to be the same as an ENV200, essentially, and not any bigger. There's loads of other, we had to look at an eight seater, etc. Not worth it, uh, just too big. So it fits perfectly for our personal use. Some other people might get along with a Volvo Estate. Cool, good for you. In our purpose, we needed the NV200 body. Um, which fitted lovely into our whole, well, everything we do. And uh, we've moved home in our NV200s, in fact. Um, all of us got every single thing in that van. Back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. Absolutely brilliant. Um, so there we go. I hope that answers some of the questions. Um, not here for, um, you know, debate and argument type thing. It's just a video diary talking about my, our family's journey with EVs over the 10 years. It has been stellar up until this individual vehicle had an issue of which we've now resolved without really much hassle. Was it cheap? It wasn't that cheap, no. Uh, so the suggestion you could do this on the cheap is not really a thing. Um, but I will cover that in another video because we've got actual facts and figures of exactly how it panned out in real life to what's available on the market as replacement parts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and all the other complexities that go with it. Either side of the argument, it's just not simple just to do something. Um, you can't just simply go and buy a diesel for two pounds, three pounds, and, and then you're all fine, everything's merry. And at the same side of the argument, I can't just replace a few cells in the pack either um, in this instance. So yeah, do really to follow up. I hope that helps answer some of the questions, but please remember, be polite for one. Um, and secondly, it's just a video diary of what we're doing. Um, and we didn't buy it to be green, bought it for financial. Um, so it had almost, almost broken even. So basically bought the car, the cost savings against fuel had almost netted out, not, this phone's alive, almost netted out, not quite, um, not quite got there. It was a bit early to fail for the mileage that we've done to cross over that cost saving. But even the concept of saving money um, by buying an electric car is, is a strange one. You'd never, it's not a metric you'd have ever taken into account. Um, but being able to bench it up against fuel savings <clears throat> is pretty incredible that you can even buy a car because obviously you've got depreciation that goes on, but you're always buying fuel. We always were doing all the years we've been driving. Obviously we're always buying fuel. That suddenly stopped. And then you can actually say we're not, that 300 quid a month, that's not happening anymore. You know, there is a cost for the electric, but it's substantially less. And especially as we got solar, etc. cetera, now um, it's even less. Um, so it almost broke even, not quite. It'd be nice to go over, you know, another year or two to really build up that reserve in it uh, to make it in terms of maths alone, actually all right to spend some money on it. Parents. Leaf, of course, paid for itself, I think, two years ago. So every month on month on month, they're just putting aside what they would have spent on fuel um, and just setting it up so they're ready to buy another one as it goes. Or maybe they might put a bigger battery in it. More on that at some point. But yeah, there we go. Video diary, 19 minutes, coming on 20 minutes. Uh, I wish you all the best. And uh, next video will be just more details um, of how we fixed our ENV 200. So if you haven't already, just subscribe. Um, whether you don't like EVs or do, then you might just be interested in following the journey. Uh, personally, we love them. Um, so that's all it really matters, it's a video diary. So I'm not advocating anything, it's just an insight into our ownership, warts and all. Um, so yeah, do subscribe, give us a like, 
and I'll catch you on the next video. Goodbye.